up YouTube, it's your boy JB and I'm here tonight with a review for Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season number four, this is episode number three and this episode was titled uh, Hot Mike. So you guys, without further ado, let's get into the video and if you guys do know, I am watching Watch What Happens Live. So DJ Khaled and Karen are on which Watch What Happens Live with Andy. Karen is a beautiful woman. I think Karen is really pretty. But the thing with Karen is her wigs. It's like she wears these blonde wigs and they just make her look older than what she actually is because Karen was actually on um Wendy Williams show on I think it was Thursday and Karen wore a blonde wig on the Wendy Williams show. The wig I didn't like the wig cuz like again, I think when I think of a, a blonde wig, I think of a younger woman. No offense to anybody that's older. But it just doesn't fit Karen for her. You know, it just does not fit Karen. I wish Karen would wear a darker color. Maybe like, um, not because the platinum blonde, I don't, I don't think it's, she just should do platinum blonde. Maybe like a honey blonde or something. Anything other than the platinum blonde because it just doesn't fit Karen. Just my personal opinion. But, um, yeah, without further ado, you guys, we're just going to go ahead and just jump right into the video. All right, you guys, so we're going to start the episode review with the stuff that just really didn't have a lot to talk about in the episode. So I think I'm going to start first with Robin because Robin, she just didn't have, like I said, didn't have very much to the episode. So we see her and we see Juan. They are going to this house that she bought last season that she's supposed to be, you know, she was supposed to renovate it and put it back on the market. And, you know, that was supposed to be like a Oh, what's her name? Brittany from um, General Hospital. Damn, y'all like get sidetracked easily. Fuck. And that's how uninteresting Robin's story was this week. So, like I said, the, the house that she was rehabbing, you know, it was supposed to be a four to four month job. But I researched. I did a re little research on it before I came on camera. It's a typically between four to eight months to get that stuff done and you know ready. But the thing, my thing with Robin is. The house was in horrible shape last year. Correct. I'm not going to knock that. The house was in horrible shape. But it's not like Robin had to, you know, take a house and completely rebuild, you know, build a house from the ground up. Or even if it was a house that was like almost condemned or something, it's not like she had to just go in there and do a whole, whole lot to it. You just had to put down some new floors, you know, redo the walls, the ceilings, you know, um, maybe put some carpeting in in the bedrooms fix the bathroom, fix the kitchen, you know, fix everything up. So it's not like she had to do a whole, whole lot to the house, but that four month job has now turned into an eight month job, which I thought she said last week it was 10 months or the first, or the first episode she said it was 10 months, which again, is still too fucking long. It's not, it's a remodel. You're not building a house from the ground up. So I just don't know if Robin got in too and over her head and didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Which I think that's pretty much more so what it is that she got into. She she thought that this would be something easy that she can just go in and do. And when she got the house and, you know, saw what needed to be done and how much stuff cost, I think maybe Robin probably got in a little bit deeper than what she expected to get. And, you know, like I said, she has Juan with her. They walking around the house and he's like, is the floor down? And, he, and then he was, and he was also like, man, what the fuck was up with? Like, what did the house look like before you got it? Which, like I said, it was it was. A shit show when she got it last year but I, I I really don't know what to say about it like and then you know she's talking about how you know she felt like it's gonna have to she gonna have to put extra money into it an extra ten thousand dollars I'm like damn if he had no if he didn't want to marry you you know before now he definitely has reason to not want to marry you now like you are not good with fucking money like the fuck man ten like ten uh, extra ten thousand dollars and then you're not even sure you're going to break even with the house. Like, man, I wouldn't trust Robin with a rusty fucking penny. Like, I wouldn't be like, hey, Robin, I need you to hold my penny. Don't let my penny go nowhere. Don't spend my penny. Don't do shit with my penny. Because I feel like if I come back, my penny going to be gone. I'm like, well, what the fuck did you with my penny, Robin? Like, the fuck? Man, I just wouldn't trust Robin with shit. I don't even trust her. Like, I really wouldn't. She ain't good with money. All right, you guys. So next, we are going to move over to Monique. So we see Monique. Monique is uh, having dinner with her kids. Her kids, especially the little girl, Milani, she looks exactly like Monique, even a little boy. He looks like Monique, but he's just a little, he's a little bit darker than Monique, which nothing's wrong with that. 
but they both look just like her so you know like i said they're having dinner and you know she's getting ready to give them a bath and when she gives them a bath you know she and chris are talking and uh what were they talking about you know they're talking about the new baby coming and you know he's talking about having an oops baby she's like uh there's not gonna be no oops baby you getting a, you, get, you getting a vasectomy he's like i ain't getting nothing done she's like well i'm gonna go absent and he's like that's not gonna happen like he I get, I, I mean, he comes off a little bit barbaric when it comes to him talking about the ki having kids. Like, y'all y'all have three. Y'all should be good. Like, what y'all need a fourth? I, I mean, I'm, kids are a blessing. But if your wife don't want to have another one, why would you want to have another one? Like, so that was pretty much it for Monique and Chris. Really much one, really wasn't much. All right, so next we got Candace. Um, again, it wasn't really much with Candace in either. So we see Candace and Chris, they in bed, and you know, they are talking about, you know, going on the honeymoon. Chris wants to wait on the honeymoon because he feels like on a honeymoon, I guess he would be too tired to do anything and he don't want to waste the money, which I don't blame him. But honeymoon is, you know, about, I guess, you know, re relaxing, enjoying your spouse, having sex, and you know again relaxing so i don't know if he would necessarily be wasting i i guess i get what he's saying he don't want to be stuck he don't want to just spend his whole honeymoon in a room sleep i guess that's what he meant i don't know maybe maybe not so then we see them and they um go to open their wedding gifts and you know they open the gifts from i think it was monique and chris somebody i don't know who all they open gifts from i don't really i didn't really take that down because it wasn't that important so then, you know, Candace is just talking about how, you know, she wants to get their own place, which I think is about time that y'all get your own place. Like you're married, you're married, you're a husband and wife, but you still live in the house at your, your mom's house that she, I mean, I know y'all pay half of it and she pays half of it. Like, why not just get out and get your own place so that way you can get off your mama's titties and, you know, you can just be financially independent of her. So that way your mama can't say shit to you and she can be like, you know, you can be like, well, mama, that's your house. You do what you want with your house. I'm do what I want over here at my house and just leave it at that. Like, I think it's just time that Karen, I mean, not Karen, but Candace to say, fuck it. We moving out. We done. All right. Next, we got Giselle. So we see Giselle and she's going to see the therapist that she and Sherman were seeing, but she's going solo dolo this time. No Sherman in sight. So, you know, um, she's just catching her therapist up on what happened, how, you know, Sherman didn't come to the wedding with her like he talked about in the last session. He called her two hours before the wedding saying that he wasn't coming. She said, you know what, I'm going to be nice. It was two and a half hours. So, you know, um, with this therapist, what I really hope is I hope that Giselle works on her horrible personality that she has because Giselle has a fucked up personality. And then I also want her to work on that big ass ego that she got because Giselle is so used to men falling all over her being like, oh, Giselle, you're so gorgeous. Let me, I want to be with you. And, you know, she's just used to, you know, men stroking her ego so that way she can turn them down. But the shoe is on the other foot. And Sherman is not that good looking of a guy. And Sherman has dumped Giselle. So Giselle's ego is bruised, battered and tattered because she was dumped by Sherman. So, you know, like I said, I just hope she works on that big ass ego and I hope she works on that personality that she got because she has a, a, a fucked up personality, in my personal opinion. Um, so, then you know, they're talking about her relationships. We go down memory lane with um, the guy that was friends with her mama, the one that told her she, she would be calling him daddy. And then, you know, the other guy that, you know, was on the day where that was acting so weird. And, you know, she's just talking about how she just terminates all her relationships exactly what i said again that ego thing because i'm pretty sure in the past it was always giselle that breaks it off with the man you know the man pursues her so heavily but then she's like oh i'm not you know once i find out something about him or once i lose interest in him i'm done with him but when it comes to sherman like i said sherman was a different case sherman dumped her and she don't know how to handle that shit that's the big problem with giselle she just does not know how to handle that at all and the therapist, man, he looked like he was so frustrated with Giselle, which I bet you he was frustrated with. Like, man, why do I have to sit here and listen to this woman talk about her bullshit? Like, nobody can help her. The only person that can help her would be God because she has a, she just has a superiority complex. She thinks she's, she thinks she's God's gift to man, basically. Like, I know that man was just frustrated listening to her. So then later in the episode, we see Giselle. She's having lunch. 
And she having lunch with, oh my God, none other than I roll Katie Ross. Y'all, Katie Ross is back. I really did not think we would ever see Katie Ross again after season one, after she kept begging Andrew for that engagement ring. And then when she got the engagement ring, they broke up. Like, I swear to God, I just never thought we would see Katie Ross again. Like, thank the Lord, hallelujah, that Sharice is gone. But in Sharice's place, we get Katie. Katie, of all people. Oh, God, Katie is insufferable. Like, I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to put up with this season of Katie Ross. But we're going to figure it out. All right, next, guys, we got Karen. So we see Karen and Ray and um they're going to shop around for the headstones for her mom and her dad that is i still you know my heart really really goes out to karen in this situation i don't know what that feels like to lose two people that you care about the most right behind one another so i i really don't know how she feels i did lose my grandmother in 2013 and I lost my mother in 2017. So it was a it was some uh, some it was a it was a, it was a gap of five years that I lost the two people who meant the most to me in this world. So I can't say that I know what it means feels like to lose two people in seven months behind each other. So my heart, like I said, goes out to Karen, but I definitely do know what that feels like to go and you know make the final decision for your loved one, and that's to put the heads if you if you bury your family members to put the headstone on their um, grave. I know what that feels like because I went with my aunt and we purchased my grandmother's headstone and we purchased my mom's headstone, which are both identical to one another. Now, here's a weird thing, because I didn't go home for Mother's Day weekend. I didn't go home for Mother's Day last weekend. I stayed home because I just didn't feel like doing a turnaround trip in my hometown. But my cousin texted me and I don't know how, like I get when you go down, you, when you mowing the lawn and stuff, but how do you knock over something that is built into a headstone? So my mom's headstone has a it has a built in um, a built in base where you can put flowers into it, and my grandmother's does as well. Now I don't know how, and it, it's it was you know it was like I said built in, but somebody had knocked my mom's off, but my grandmother's is still in place, and I'm confused about that. And my mom and my grandmother, they're not that far apart from each other. But they're a good enough distance to where if you knock my mom's off, you should have knocked my grandmother's off as well. But you just knocked my mom's off. So now I have to go down there and buy some glue and put that thing back on there. And I'm, I'm just really upset and pissed off about that. Like that just ups, that pisses me off because it actually happened to my uncle who I was named after. Someone knocked his off years ago and we just have never replaced it because he was in the art. He was in a, he was a Marine. And you know the Marines had paid for they had paid for his stuff, and his had a vase on it, and someone knocked his vase off. So you know what? I guess this one I might do is something. Well, you know what? We can't even see, you can't even see where his is anymore because my uncle has been he's been deceased longer than I've been alive. And I'm getting off subject once again, but you know just just saying that I understand how that feels to make that final purchase of the headstones for your loved ones. So, um, and the weird thing is that Karen's dad and her and Ray are literally are a few years younger than what my mom was because my mom was born in, in 1940 and Karen's dad is 1944. And I think she said Ray is a year or two younger than her dad. And it just, it's like, wow, man. Wow. It's just crazy to, you know, think about people who were born in the forties that most of them are not here anymore and because i was looking at my mom's because my mom was like one of the last few people actually i think my mom was the last person in her graduating high school class that was still living because i think everybody in her class was deceased before she passed away so i think she, like i said i think she was the last person that was living from her class and even my aunts and uncles that are around my mom's age when they go to their class reunions is diminishing because more and more of them are passing away it's just crazy, man. How li it just—it's really crazy how life works, man. All right, so then we see Karen. She's at her home, and you know she's blessing her home for the darkness that is about to appear, which is Giselle. She's like, "Help me, Father, bless this house. Keep all the dark spirits away 
including Giselle, like, yes, keep all the dark spirits away, including that bitch. And then, you know, the sage one, oh, no, 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 I got to like this again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got something for your ass. I got something for that ass. And Giselle's like, girl, are you saging me? She's like, yes, I am definitely saging you. Definitely. Like, yes, bitch, you need to be saged. Like, your spirit is so dark and, ugh. Like, season one, I like Giselle. I did. But after, you know, we started to see who Giselle really was on the show, that's when I was like, you know what, I'm good on Giselle. And I just had to, you know, I had to be done with Giselle because her spirit is just, it's just so icky and so ugh. And then, you know, she's talking about, you know, give me the grand, grand dame tour. So Karen's like, oh, girl, no, you only get two, you only get two rooms. She's like, I only get two rooms. Like, girl, just say you just live in the basement. Like, really, Giselle? Like, how like how nasty can you be? Like, that, like if it was me, Giselle would have been lucky to even get past the, my driveway. Like, because you said, I, one, you said I didn't live here. And you talked so much shit about me. And then, you know, Karen's just, like, talking about what happened last year. How Giselle was not a good friend, which Giselle is clearly not a good friend. Because, you know, she was talking about the um, whole tax scene that Giselle did. And that was tacky as fuck what Giselle did last season. Like, uber tacky. Like, you know, read the shirt. Free Uncle Ben. Hashtag reef tax reform. Like, that shit was just tacky. And I don't know why she felt like that was a good thing to do last season. Like, oh, God. So then, you know, um, you know, Karen just said she don't know if they, um, if she's ready to be friends with her. I would not want to be friends with Giselle. Giselle is not a friend to anybody. So then they tell each other secrets. And I'm like, y'all could have kept these secrets in y'all head. Because Karen's talking about how, you know, she um, she has some, you know, questions. And then she took her implants out. I'm glad she took them. Them implants were so... Because when you go back and look at season one's um, intro card. And you look at how big her breast was. Like, god damn. They were about as big as Wendy Williams titties. And, like, wow. But, you know, Karen's talking about how she just has insecurities. Because now her titties look like, you know, look like two flat pancakes. They look like, you know, eggs in a skillet. Just sitting to the side. Like, Karen, you are a 56-year-old woman, so it's fine if your titties sag. It really is. They shouldn't, it ain't, it ain't a problem if your titties don't sit perky. That's okay. You are 56, and then wrong with some saggy titties. If, if Ray has been with you as long as he's been with you, 23 years, I think you said on Wendy Williams, then he's seen, you know, he, he, he should be fine with your saggy titties. I'm pretty sure his balls are gray and saggy. Ugh. Wow, people really still watch American Idol? I mean, this is the only thing that was on because I just refused to sit there and watch an episode of Don't Be Tardy for the Party. But damn, people really still watch American Idol. I have not watched American Idol in years. I don't even remember the last American Idol that won. But that's not even what we're here for. We're going to move over to the one person that gets on my nerves the most. That is Miss Ashley. So, the episode. We saw the episode and it, you know, we started with the party. They didn't tell us nothing about the party or whose party it was. But, you know, we see Michael and Michael is flirting with some black dude at the party. And I'm like, you hear something about how, wow, that is, that is rock fucking hard. I know he wants to talk about his dick, but I wonder, I wonder what the fuck was Michael touching that it was rock fucking hard. Either his, his, it had, you know, his chest could be rock hard. His abs could be rock hard or his ass could be rock hard. Leave it to your own, own interpretation. But then again, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, why are you touching? That's Michael's problem. Michael has a problem with touching men, not women, but men in inappropriate ways. Like, but this is a week earlier. So then we see Ashley, you know, we see her mama. She's over there at the house with Ashley. What the fuck was on her mama's hair? Like, I was so confused about the mama's hair. Like, what the fuck is that? So, uh, you know, Ashley's still talking about how, you know, she's not drinking. But you have a, your mom, you and your mama are having a corona right now. So you can stop with this whole I'm not drinking. And, you know, she's talking about how she um, read that, you know, tap water can mess with your fertility. And I'm like, tap water? Tap water can mess with your fertility. Okay. I guess so then Ash and her mom they are planning the party for her uncle I think his name is Uncle Lump the one that Ashley looks at like a father and you know um 
So Michael, Michael was on his exercise bike, and now Michael walked towards his their room, and I'm like, damn, is Michael just going to completely ignore Sheila this whole time? No, he didn't. So Michael comes in and he speaks to Sheila, and they give each other a hug. And Ashley's like, <laughs> so sorry, I haven't saw this in a long time. I'm like, Ashley, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, you doing the most for no reason? Like, it's a hug. You know, like your mama is being nice, being cordial, and Michael's reciprocating that. So for her to just break out crying, I'm like, girl, you doing the most for no fucking reason. You are turning into Candace with the crying. So then later we see Candace and Ashley, they are having lunch. And, you know, they're not really friends, but they're also, they're not even enemies. So I guess they would be technically frenemies with one another because they're friends, but they argue at the same time. So, and they're at, they're at Ashton Restaurant Oz. I'm sorry to tell you, but there is no way on God's green earth that you could pay me to eat at Oz because there's no way I'm finna eat no f emu, emu, emu. Like I'm not gonna eat that shit. The fuck? I don't. I I don't want to eat. I mean, it might be good to some people, but it just ain't something that I would want to eat. If you ain't got no chicken, no burgers, no steak, no French fries, no uh, what else you got? You know, um, some fish, some catfish, um. What else can we what else can we add? Porch I don't eat pork chops. Um some some what you know uh just anything American that we would eat. Like I said, I just don't eat I, that's weird. I don't eat pork chops. I don't I barely eat actually I don't really eat pork like that. The only type of pork that I eat I'm not gonna say I don't eat pork, period. I just don't eat pork chops. I don't like to cook pork chops. I hate that you have to cook pork chops so fucking long, so I don't eat them, and I will never eat them. I've actually I've never cooked a pork chop. My mom used to cook them. Now if somebody cooks a pork chop, I'll eat it. But if I gotta cook it, I ain't cooking it, bitch. So you know, Candace and Ashley are talking about the wedding, and you know, Candace was talking about how you know with her inviting everybody, it was like a you know she wanted peace, she wanted to extend olive branches to everybody, and Ashley was like. <laughs> Your seating arrangement said otherwise. Girl, the fact that you had to sit in front of Karen and uh, Monique, it ain't that big of a deal because you started the shit between those two last season. So you need to own up to what you did and then maybe things will be cool and copacetic. But until then, it's on you. Like I said, you started the bullshit. So you need to be the one to settle the bullshit. Okay, and then again, Ash is still on this whole thing of I'm not drinking. Girl. You got a whole Corona light in front of you, but whatever flow show, but we, because we all know that Ashley is currently pregnant and she was on Watch What Happens Live last week with Candace and she's eight and a half, she's eight months pregnant and she's just, she, I think she found out last week what she's having. So Ash is almost due. So we can, I, I really hate that we got to talk about this shit because we know she's pregnant. So we're going to move on to this party that she had for her uncle Lump. So we see all the girls there. We see Giselle there. We see Candace there. We see Robin show up who looks like a freaking a fucking pixie with pink hair. Um, And then we see Katie Ross there. And I'm just like, oh my God. So, you know, when Robin showed up, Michael's like, why didn't you bring Juan? I'm like, why are you so worried about Juan? Like there are other, I mean, you got Chris Bassett here. Like, get to know Chris. No, he wants Juan. You know what? I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. Now. I, I just thought about it, but I wasn't going to say it, but I'm definitely going to say it. Michael has a type. Michael has a type when it comes to men and women, mostly men. Michael got a motherfucking type. He likes black men. <laughs> he likes black men. Think about it. He was flirting with a black man at, at the bar. He's asking about Juan, who's black. He wanted to grab uh, Ray's ass last week, who was black. He not fucking with Chris, who's white. Like, Michael got a fucking type. Michael likes black men. <laughs> oh, shit. Michael got a fucking type. And how much you want to guess that the, that the uh, man that he grabbed, the cameraman or, or producer or whoever ass he grabbed was black. I bet he was black. Oh my God. Michael got a fucking type. Black man. I just put that together. 
Oh my God. So, like I said, Katie was there. And Katie came in all types of wrong. So, you know, she speaks to Robin. She speaks to Giselle. She speaks to Ashley. And she speaks to Candace. But then she gives Candace some unsuffucking licited advice. She says, you know, because Candace said that they've been married for like, what, four or five days? She said, oh, if I would have met you four or five days before, I would have told you not to do it. And I'm looking at Katie like, girl, I would have told Katie like, bitch, I don't even know you. So keep your advice to yourself. Like, I don't need it. The fuck? Who asked for your advice? Not I. Like, I would have cussed Katie clear, slap smooth the fuck out. So, like I said before, Michael flirted with the man at the bar, black man at that, and he just kept saying that it was rock fucking hard. I'm like, what? How much y'all? I'm like, I don't know if he grabbed the man's ass because he said he he thought it would be like jelly. So I'm assuming he grabbed the man's. I'm assuming it was the man's ass he was talking about because his. I don't know if because his chest, your abs are gonna be hard. So it can't be his. It can't be his abs. So it's either his. It can't be his. Well, you know what? No, no, he grabbed the man's ass. It was the man's ass. No if ands, or buts about it. It was the man's ass. So then we see, you know, they having fun at the party. So then, you know, we see footage from five hours or later, and this is footage from Robin's cell phone. So Robin is saying, you know, they basically party up until the early morning, and you know, she's talking about how she overheard Michael say he would suck somebody's dick. Now she didn't say whose dick he said he was sucking, but he said he would suck somebody's dick. So then we see Michael, and he's, I think he was talking to production talking about his microphone was you know wasn't on because you know he said he may have said some stuff that you know might get him in trouble and that's pretty much where the episode ended you guys so like the video leave your comments subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys later bye